Hey guys, this is Chris Cottrell and welcome back to the Dabbler Stand. Um, a few weeks ago, the guys over at the Seven Ages Audio Journal put together an outstanding podcast on Southeastern archaeology featuring Dr. Albert Goodyear and Dr. Chris Moore. Uh, both of these gentlemen are members of the Comet Research Group, which I've mentioned uh, in the past, uh, and they're very respected in their field of study. Uh, well, <laughs> the topic of Carolina Bays was brought up, and let's just say that I felt the need to make a response video about that. Um, let me start off by saying that I 100% respect both of these guys uh, and the work that they've done to promote Paleo-Indian archaeology here in the Southeast. You know, and I agree with absolutely everything they have to say with the exception of their views on the Carolina Bays and their formation. Um, in this episode, which you can listen to by clicking on the link up above here um, or going to their website in the description below, but they do a great job explaining the current scientifically accepted explanation for the Carolina Bays. Um, you know, I highly suggest you go listen to what they have to say before finishing this video. Um, and, you know, while the whole audio journal is great, uh, you know, they, they do specifically bring up the Carolina Bays right at around that 30 minute mark of that, that podcast. So just to recap, you know, Dr. Goodyear and Dr. Moore both agree that the scientifically accept, accepted explanation for all the bays, uh, all the Carolina Bays up and down the East Coast, regardless of their varying size, regardless of their consistent shape and regardless of their precise orientation are not caused by a cosmic impact into the Laurentide Ice Sheet during our most recent ice age, as I do. Uh, but instead, uh, they are results of paleoclimate or wind and water erosion of shallow ponds over a very long period of time, you know, like hundreds of thousands of years. Um, and to go against these ideas, and I quote Dr. Goodyear here, is not based on good science. You know, they base their hypothesis, at least stated in this hypothesis, on the optically stimulated luminescence dating of the sand rims uh, that form on the southeast sides of the bays, uh, the supposed migration of these rims, and evidence of Paleo-Indian or Clovis occupation on the rims during the last ice age. Uh, this, this bay right here is Herndon Bay uh, in North Carolina, which Dr. Moore has studied quite extensively throughout his career. And, you know, I can see why one would draw these conclusions using the aerial photographs available, you know, a decade or so ago, you know, and standing on this sand rim right here that overlooks a cultivated field, you know, but, but things are different today. You know, we have better technology. We have better tools to help us see the bigger picture. And that's how science works. You know, thanks to Michael Davius, we now have the advantage of using LIDAR uh, to really see with our own eyes the true extent of these bays. I mean, look, they're everywhere. You know, you can see their sheer number. You can see their perfectly elliptical shapes uh, and, and, you know, that all of them have. Uh, we can see their perfect orientation. They could be measured. They could be counted. You know, this is all good science. And you and I could do this at home. You know, just go to Cintos.org, click on Michael Davies's uh, Bay Survey link, and have at it. You know, geographic statistical analysis at your fingertips. Uh, we also have the work of Antonio Zamora, who I've also mentioned in the past. Uh, in this podcast, Dr. Moore specifically cites uh, Ray uh, Kazorsky Kaz Kaz <laughs> uh, and his 1977 uh, wind and water table experiment as proof of the bay's formation. Um, he basically alternates a fan's wind direction every 15 minutes you know, over a sand-bottomed pool of water for four hours and got this shape right here. And as predicted, you know, the wind and water does reshape the sandy shorelines. But as Zamora points out, it's not the same shape. You know, the Carolina Bays have almost perfect length to width ratios uh, in their symmetry. The wind blown deposits do not. And even if they did, we should see bays at different stages of development all over the place. But we don't. You know, they're all different sizes, uh, all the same shape and all the same orientation. And again, Let's not forget about the Nebraska rainwater basins, you know, halfway across the continent. Again, the same shape, same orientation. Um, and ironically, Zamora has done some experimentation of his own and was able to get the exact ratio of the bays with nothing more than a slingshot and an ice cube in his backyard. You know, go ahead and click the link above if you want more information about that. Now, as far as the bays migrating over long periods of time, you know, I really feel that there are some issues with the dating methods being used here. 
um, you know, which I have covered in my earlier videos. You know, Dr. Moore mentions that the optically stimulated luminescence stating of the spin rims uh, show a decreasing age the closer you get to the basins themselves. Well, you would expect to see the same thing if the bays were created by secondary low trajectory impact. Uh, you can see the, uh, from these simple crater diagrams here, um, it's the surface material closest to the point of impact that gets thrown farthest away from the depression. And the material closer to the rim gets lifted up and over. You know, because of the low trajectory or the low angle of these icy impactors, the material gets tossed forward and it piles up in front of the depressions, you know, hence the raised sand rims on the southeast sides of the bays. You know, and on top of that, using the same image that Dr. Moore uses, you can easily see that the bays were in fact formed by a very rapid succession of impacts, you know, one after the other, as seen, you know, by this, this quick order count I put together uh, on my cell phone, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Um, you know, these bays haven't budged for thousands of years, and and I'd I'd say right at about thirteen thousand years, in fact. Uh, another strike against the current scientifically accepted hypothesis, as explained by Dr. Goodyear and Dr. Morton's podcast, uh, is that some of these Carolina bays, and I would even say probably a vast majority of them, judging from the lidar images were never ponds to begin with. You know, this one in particular, uh, which was aptly named Howard Bay by Dr. Alan West after George Howard, who I've also mentioned a few times in previous uh, videos, uh, was heavily studied, studied and found to have never contained a body of water that would have been necessary for the aeolian processes to create it. Um, but they did, however, find traces of extraterrestrial impact markers like carbon spherules and iridium uh, within the sediment of the bays and then nothing below it. Hmm. And lastly, uh, and this is more a little more speculation on my part, but the fact that the that that there have been Clovis artifacts found within the sand rims of the Carolina Bays themselves, uh, and in one case, shallowly bur uh, buried 50 centimeters with another two meters of sand under them, uh, the paraphrase Dr. Moore, you know, that terrifies me. Um, you know, I have I haven't used an atlatl. Uh, but I have done a little bow hunting in the past, and there's nothing more frustrating than losing an arrow. I'll spend an hour looking for it, uh, and the thing only cost me a couple bucks. I can only imagine if I had to handcraft each and every one of them. You know, these stone blade points must have literally meant the world to these hunters, uh, and they aren't just going to be leaving them laying around everywhere. You know, once again, I think that all of the indications point to the Clovis people actually being here, being there on the ground when this event happened. And again, that is terrifying. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, once again, this video isn't intended to be a hit piece on Dr. Moore and Dr. Goodyear. You know, I respect both of them way too much for that. I just don't agree with some of their findings, um, at least not fully. And uh, I wouldn't even be doing these videos if I didn't feel strongly about that. Um, so with that, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, <laughs> we'll catch you next time. All right.